Okay, so we're looking at chapter three, which is representations of data. And so, so far we've seen how data is collected and how calculations can be made. And now we want to concentrate on how the process data can be displayed. And so this uh, chapter is split up into three things that you've seen before, but we're gonna make them a bit more a levely so we're going to look at box plots and outliers, sometimes called box and whisker diagrams, but we'll be calling them box plots. We're going to look at cumulative frequency diagrams, and we're going to look at histograms as well. So let's get started with box plots. So a bit of a recap from GCSE here. Box plots allow us to visually represent the distribution and location of the data. Now, when I talk about the distribution of the data, I'm talking about how spread out things are, like the interquartile range and the range. And when I'm talking about the location, I'm talking about physically where some of these values actually lie. So you can see here, and you should know this already, that the minimum is indicated on the diagram by this little line that you have at the end. The first section of the box is the lower quartile. The median is that middle line. And the upper quartile is the top section of the box. And then the maximum is the top end that you've got on the box and whisker diagram or the box plot, sorry. So the interquartile range is the gap between the lower quartile and the upper quartile. So how wide this bit of the middle box is tells you about the interquartile range. And then the range is the distance between the minimum value and the maximum value. And so it's how long the entire diagram is for the range. And how you might interpret a box plot, or what things we might know about this. So we're going to do true or false with a couple of these ones that we've got here. First of all, it says that the right box, which is this one I'm talking about here, represents more people than the left box, because it looks bigger, right? Well, in fact, this one here is false. The reason that this is false is because we know that each of these sections that we've got here represents a quarter or 25% of the people. So even though these little bits look smaller, they still represent the same amount of people. So in a box plot, each of these sections represents 25% of the people. Then we've got a second bit which says that the ages are more spread out above the median. Well, that I think is going to be true. Because if you look at this bit here, above the median, this distance that we've got is really big. So I would say this is quite a large spread compared to below the median. It is not very wide, so it is less spread out. So because there's 25% of people crammed in between these two values, they're going to be quite similar to each other. They're not going to be very spread out. But because there's 25% people in this bit, they're actually going to be quite spread. So it's the same idea. Half of the people are squashed into this section. The other half above the median are kind of spread out in this section. So they are more spread out above the median. Now I'm going to talk to you about outliers. So outliers are extreme values. And one common definition of an outlier is 1.5 interquartile ranges beyond the lower and upper quartiles. So what I mean by that is you'd calculate the interquartile range and then you'd multiply it by 1.5. And then you would add that on to the upper quartile or take it away from the lower quartile to find out the boundaries of what would be considered like a sensible range. If you go beyond that boundary, we would consider it an outlier. So you can see here we've got the, the upper quartile plus 1.5 lots of the interquartile range. And that one is this one down here. So I'll show you why that works. This distance that we've got here is the interquartile range. And I'm adding on one and a half lots of it onto the upper quartile. So this is my boundary for the, the top part. Then I've got the lower quartile minus 1.5 lots of the interquartile range. So here is the lower quartile and I'm going backwards one and a half lots of the interquartile range. So what I've said is that outliers are any values that go below this point or above this point. And so really what I should do here is I should not have done my tail going all the way to the end like this. I probably should have replaced that one with a cross. And maybe there's another one that was across there. And instead, I would put my uh, bottom end of it wherever the next value would be. So I've said at the bottom that outliers are marked with a cross. So if I had another piece of data, it could have been marked up here. Normally, though, you would mark them like in the same kind of level but I was just putting them up top so you could see where they were gonna belong, okay? So let's leave those where I had them there.
Okay, so outliers are marked with a cross. So we're gonna actually now just find out some quartiles and outliers for this kind of thing. So we've got the diameters of 11 different Roman coins measured in centimeters. Determine the quartiles and hence any outliers. Okay, so first of all, Q1, we've got 11 of them. So we would just do 11 divided by four and see what we get. Well, 11 divided by four is 2.75. So because it's a decimal for the 2.75, we're just gonna find the third value which is just 2.7. So we have 2.7 for the lower quartile. I'm then gonna find the median as well, um, because the median is technically one of the quartiles. So I'll do 11 over two, which is 5.5. .5. So I'm looking for the 5.5, but because it's in a list, I round it to the sixth. And so this one is going to be three for the median. And then for the upper quartile, I'm gonna do 11 over four times three or three quarters of 11 over four. So let's just times that one by three. It's the 8.2 fifth. Remember, if it's a decimal, you just round it up to the ninth. And so the ninth one is going to be 3.2. So we want to determine any outliers. Now we're going to use the traditional outliers of the definition of 1.5 interquartile ranges above or below. So I better find out what the interquartile range is going to be. So it's Q3 minus Q1. So that's 3.2 minus 2.7, which is 0.5. So my outlier boundaries, I'm going to find the lower one using the definition, and I'll always tell you this in the question, but I'm going to do Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So that's 2.7 minus 1.5 times 0.5. So 2.7 minus 1.5 times, whoops, times 0.5. So it's 1.95. So this means anything below 1.95 is an outlier. And when I say an outlier, I mean it's like an extreme value. So we have no outliers from this. Because you can see on our data, we don't have anything that goes below 1.95. So I'm gonna do my other one, which is Q3, the upper quartile, plus 1.5 lots of the interquartile range. So the upper quartile is 3.2, and I'm gonna be adding on 1.5 multiplied by the interquartile range. So that's 3.2 plus 1.5 multiplied by the interquartile range, which is 6.2. So anything above, whoops, above 6.2 is an outlier. 6 point, oh, I typed it in and wrong again. 1.5 times 0 0.5, 3.95, excuse me. I've got to learn to use my calculator properly. So anything above 3.95 is an outlier. So looking at our list, this is an outlier and this is an outlier. This gives, 4.0 and 4.7 as outliers. So it doesn't mean that they are like wrongly recorded. It just means we need to look at them and say, okay, let's just see if these if these make sense. And there could be coins that have those di cent uh, those diameters. Okay, so we've got a different kind of one now where we're going to look at a couple of different ways of calculating them. We've got the standard one here and then we've got a different one we'll talk about. So we've got the ages of 15 Lib Dem MPs are given here and it says if an outlier is considered to be 1.5 interquartile ranges below the lower quartile or above the upper quartile, determine any outliers. So this one, I'm going to do it in my kind of traditional GCSE way. I'll find out if I, oh, actually, I guess if I've got 15, let's just find the lower quartile and the upper quartile. So I'll do 15 over 4. 15 over 4 is 3.75. So I'm looking for this 3.75, which we're going to round to the fourth, which is 27. Now I'm going to do the upper quartile. So that would be 3 times 15 over 4. Which is 11.25. So I'm going to round that to the 12th. So I can go backwards 15, 14, 13, 12. So 58 is the upper quartile, meaning that the interquartile range is 58 take away 27. And 58 take away 27 is 31. So my boundaries. 
I'll do my lower boundary first of all. My lower boundary is going to be Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So that's 27 minus 1.5 times 31. Um, yeah, great. So that's going to be 27 minus 1.5 times 31. Well, that's minus 19.5. So clearly, I've got no outliers on that lower end there, because I've got the smallest I've got is 11.5. This uh, it's not 11.5. This is uh, of, this obviously seems a bit strange though that I've got 11 as one of the ages of the Lib Dem MPs. But hey, this is what the data is suggesting. Might have been an error, but we haven't identified it. Okay, now I'm going to do the upper boundary. The upper boundary is going to be Q3 plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So that's 58 plus 1.5 times 31. So that's 58 plus 1.5 times 31, which is 104.5. 104.5. So because this one at the end here is bigger than that, it's an outlier. So because 105 is greater than 104.5, it is an outlier. So that was part A of the question. It says if instead an outlier is considered to be two is considered to be outside two standard deviations within the mean, determine any outliers. So we need to figure out for part B what the mean is. So the mean is the sum of x divided by how many there are, and there are 15. So that's 613 over 15, which is 40.9. That's to one decimal place. Now we need to find out what the standard deviation is. So the standard deviation is the square root of the mean of the squares. So that will be the sum of x squared which is 33815 over 15, minus the square of the mean, which is going to be minusing our 40.9 all squared. So that's 33815, 33815 over 15, minus the answer that we've got previously all squared. So it's 24.17. So I'm going to do the average plus two standard deviations and see what that's going to be. So it's 40.9 plus two lots of that answer. So that's 40.9 plus two lots of that answer. So that's 89.2. 89.2 is my upper boundary. And that upper boundary means that 105 is an outlier. So 105 is an outlier. And now I'm going to do the mean minus two lots of the standard deviation to get that lower boundary. So that's 40.9 minus two lots of the standard deviation, which is minus 7.44. Minus 7.44. So no more outliers. So look, they've both just identified the same outlier of 105. So that's it. Okay, I have one more here that I wanted to do, where we have introducing the word of something called anomalies instead of outliers. So this time I've got the ages of nine people at a birthday party, and it says that an outlier is an observation which lies plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean. Identify any outliers for this data and clean the data of any anomalies if necessary. Note that the average is 47 and the standard deviation is 44.02. So what I've written here is that outliers which have occurred as a result of an error are called anomalies. Removing anomalies is called cleaning the data. So when you look at this list, I'm hoping that you're sensing that there's going to be an anomaly here, a mistake, which is that you can't be 165 years old. And really, I'm surprised that this 11 wasn't pulled up by uh, the as an outlier because you can't be an MP at 11 years old. So I'm guessing this is an anomaly, but the methods we used didn't even identify it. Anyway, let's have a look at this one. So we're going to do the same thing of it lying plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean. So we're going to do the mean plus two standard deviations 
and we're going to do the mean minus two standard deviations. So we'll do our 47 plus two lots of 44.02, and we'll do the same, but we'll do it with a subtraction as well. It's just going to be a bit of a calculation here. So it's 47 plus two lots of 44.02. So it's 135.04. And the lower boundary is when it was a minus, which is minus 41.04. So here we have that 165 is greater than 135.04. So is an outlier. Now, I've got some new language down here. If we want to, we can use these double inequality symbols to show that something is much greater than or much less than. So we could say, because 165 is much greater than 135.04, it is likely an anomaly. Also, People don't live to 165 years. So we should clean the data by removing this value. OK, so if you wanted to clean this data, this one is clearly not going to be of use we would clean it by removing the 165 because it doesn't seem to be accurately recorded. There must have been a mistake that was made there. OK, so I want you to have a go at this question that we've got here. All I need you to do is to identify any outliers for this one. Um, and then we're going to do a separate video afterwards. OK, pause the video, have a go. I'm going to go through this now. So we've got the length in centimetres of 12 giant African land snails given below. We're going to calculate the mean and the standard deviation and then we'll see if there are any outliers. So the mean is going to just be the sum of x divided by how many there are, and there's 12 of them. So that's 252 over 12, and 252 over 12 is, whoops, is 21. So the mean is 21 centimetres. Now we're going to work out the standard deviation. So that is the sum of the x squareds, which is 5, 4, 6, 8, the mean of the squares, minus the square of the mean that we've just worked out. So I'm going to go straight in with that in my calculator. I'm going to do 5, 4, 6, 8 over 12 minus 21 squared, all square rooted. And we get 3.83 centimetres. And I've just done that to two decimal places. So we're going to see if there are any outliers here. So for part B, I'm going to do the mean plus two standard deviations. And then I'll do the mean minus two standard deviations. So it's going to be 21 plus two lots of 3.83. 21 plus two lots of the 3.83. So it's 28.66 centimetres. And I'll do the same, but with a subtract in there as well. So that's 13.34 centimetres. So these are our boundaries. Anything above this is an outlier. Anything below this is an outlier. So this one gives no outliers. There's no data below this. And the top one identifies that 32 is an outlier because it is above this. So 32 is greater than 28.66. So 32 is an outlier. Now, as a quick comment on this, I probably wouldn't say this is an anomaly. Is it an anomaly? I'm going to say probably not. The reason it's probably not an anomaly is because it's only a little bit bigger than this and it doesn't seem to be like any reason why this might not be a possibility. Yeah, it seems like it's an outlier, but it doesn't mean that it's necessarily an anomaly. It doesn't mean that it's been recorded. We probably need to know a little bit more about what had happened. OK, so that's just box plots part one.